Welcome to Oversliced. If you like the content, please consider giving the video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Remember to press the bell icon so you never miss a notification about new content released on this channel. The amazing thing about 3D printing at home is its potential to inspire creativity. I have been 3D printing for a couple of years now, and one of my goals very early on was to create original designs for 3D printing. Recently, I designed these vases. Today, I'll share with you a couple of ways to design a vase. For this video, I'll use FreeCAD version 0.18 and Prusa Slicer version 2.0. The first method we'll use to design a vase involves a CAD operation called revolution, where we create a sketch and revolve it around an axis. In the second method, we'll design a vase using another CAD operation called loft, where we draw sketches at different heights and then connect them all into a single shape. Let's start with the first method. Go to the part design workbench and uh, create a new body. Create a sketch in the XZ or YZ plane. Since we'll be creating a profile, half profile of the vase that we would like to create. Let's start with uh, just top, the central axis along the Z axis and the base. And we'll use spline for the outside. There you have it. Um, beginnings of what will end up becoming our ways using this first method. You can adjust the spline to suit your needs. Let's uh, pull the base in a little bit and while I like to have all my sketches fully constrained for this one Let's just take a look at what it would look like once the operation is complete. So close the sketch, go to front view, and with the sketch selected, in the sketch tools, select revolutions, leave the axis to vertical axis, angle to 360, um, and that should do it. And you can already see the, sh the shape, the ways will take. Let's go to a more rounded. There you go. Now we can go in and we can give it, um, we can tune it. Let's make the neck a bit more narrow. in a little bit and there you go that looks that looks interesting enough there you go and that's our first ways let's go ahead and save this uh, we'll call this ways by revolution and I'm going to export an STL out of this file. We'll create the second vase using the loft method now. Start a new sketch, uh, a new design. Again go to the part designer, add a body, add a sketch in the XY plane. Let's create a circle. 
Let's add a radius of uh, 10. Close that. Let's call this base. Create a second circle in the XY plane. We will make this bigger. Call make this twenty. Close that. Let's rename this to L one. Create another sketch in XY. This time we will. Create a circle again. Let's go ahead and match the first one that we had. 10. L2. And then let's do the fourth one. That's why. Somewhere in between here, let's go 15. Let's call this top. Now we will leave the base one at where it is, but we'll start lifting, raising the other three. Let's raise L1. By changing its Z, you would find you can do that in the select the sketch, go to attachment, expand it to position, and Z. Let's raise it to 20, maybe 15. L2. Let's raise this to 30. And then top. Let's raise this to 50. Let's actually raise this to 60 and we will raise L2 to 40. Okay. You can already start seeing what this space will look will start it will look like. I will let me save this file as ways by loft and now select the base sketch under sketch tools additive loft which is here at the bottom go ahead and start you know select add sketch select the sketch add sketch select the next one add sketch select the third one There you go. Now you could leave the rule surface as disabled and then you will get this smooth surface that connects all three or if you select it, if you check it, then you will get sharp edges where the um, sketches are. So let's leave it at rule surface. Let's do okay. Let's now start tweaking this how you will tweak this is by changing the geometry or raising the you know changing the position of it so you can raise the l1 to say 25 oh 25 we compute it raises it let's raise the top to oh, I don't know, 100 and that did not like it because it messed up the geometry let's bring it back to 60 let's raise this to 60 and this to 80 
there you go beginning to look more like it um, if I select a sketch and press spacebar it'll make it visible so that's where L2 is let's go ahead and let's go ahead and reduce L2 to maybe say 8 and close that and the top let's bring it down to 10 maybe bring down L2 to 40 raise it up to 50 um, so this is how you would make a ways using the loft method now note that you don't have to stick with uh, circle circles for each of the sketches you can actually go ahead and um, you can have different geometries for instance let's go ahead and mess around with this one let's change this from a circle to a square make the symmetry symmetry select remove redundant constraints and make these equal give them 20 if I do that you will start to notice that it has created some unusual geometry but and that's that's what you can do with this um, loft approach let's go ahead and uh, change this one to maybe an I don't know let's try an octagon here I have no idea what it'll do but might as well change this to 30 and it is okay make this one horizontal so now it's fully constrained close this and there you go how about it I think I like this one I might keep it um, I will just reduce the size so okay so there you have it two ways to create a ways <laughs> by revolution where we start with a sketch along the profile half a sketch and then revolve it ar um, around an axis and by loft where we we stack sketches on top of each other at different heights and then using the loft operation create a shape that goes through all of those sketches and encompasses them let's go ahead and export these and pull them into a crucial slicer see what you would have to do next to print these So we are now in Prusa Slicer. I'm going to bring in the first ways so you can get a preview of what it will look like. And then I'll go over some of the settings that we'll use to print, 3D print these ways. We pull in ways by revolution. Because I saved it as a project, um, it saved the origin information and that's why it brought the ways here at the right hand bottom corner which is the zero zero on the build plate if I just do arrange it'll position it properly now you'll notice that this is a solid block that's how we modeled it uh, whereas vases on the other hand are supposed to be hollow and that is because I will hollow this one out 
inside the slicer itself using a special 3D printing technique that you might be familiar with called the spiral vase or the vase mode, where the slicer will only print the base and uh, one shell in a, in a continuous spiral to create this vase and it'll leave the top open and have no infill inside. Uh, I already have a profile set up for my printer. Uh, let me uh, show you how you would achieve the same in your version of Process Slicer. Under the print settings, under layers and perimeters, there it is, spiral vase is checked. Once you, uh, if you don't have this checked already, once you check it, Prusa Slicer will prompt you about any settings that are conflicting that it will have to reset. Uh, so you can safely accept those. Once you do that, if I go into preview mode, you will notice that it will hollow it out. And you can see, so this is what the vase will print like. Now let me bring over the second vase. Vase by loft, again, I'm going to arrange it. Let's see what this would look like. There it is. And as I go down the layers, you can see how the shapes are starting out with a circle to an octagon closing in to a square deforming back into a circle you can obviously scale this um, if I scale this to 200% and slice this, I will get the same vase in a slightly larger shape, size. This will of course take longer to print, but there it is. And there you have it. Using these techniques as starting points, you can now create your own vases in your own designs. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time.